Howdy, 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 and more howdy to you. Welcome to the Lady Walker Show. I am Lady Walker, and beloved, we have a fabulous show in store for you. I have two very special guests with me, and they are going to be sharing their books with us. One of them is Starkisha Roundtree. Starkisha, you have, this is your third time on the show. Yes. And Miss Mary H. Coleman, your right. very first time. Right. Y'all have co-authored your book. Right. That's entitled Mary's Story and Song. And I said um, H, Mary H. Coleman, because I didn't want to mess up your <laughs> middle name. Harrison. Right. Harrison. 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 That's, That's right. why I didn't want to mess it up. All right. <laughs> With Starkeisha. Mm -hmm. So, let me get to Starkeisha first, and okay. we are going to find out about your book and what inspired you and everything that it went that went into the book and what it took from you to have to remember everything, you know, that you experienced right. during your years and all of that good stuff. All right. But Star Keisha, okay. <laughs> Star Keisha Estrella. And I know I told you once I get on air, I'm not going to pronounce it right. <laughs> but you pronounce it. It's Estrella. Estrella. Yes, ma'am. Okay, it's got one yes, dog. Yes, <laughs> okay, Star Keisha, you have a very interesting story, and I'm pretty sure some of my audience, my audience members have heard, you know, saw some of the shows that you were a part of, and I'm pretty sure they can certainly uh, testify that your story is very inspiring, knowing that as a young woman, you went through some stuff. Yes. You went through some stuff, and now, um, before I get into Miss Mary, just tell us, just I know it's about Miss Mary, but just a smidgen, just a smidgen, Star Keisha, because some people didn't see the show. Okay. So just, you know, give a synopsis of your book, and here's the book right here. I'm just going to show it on camera, number, whatever I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> well, Star Keisha Estrella is my memoir. It's a true story. Um, it's a true story about child abuse, um, child abandonment, extreme family dysfunction, teen marriage, teen pregnancy, deportation, and the strength that it takes to overcome um, obstacles that block your way in life that can hold you down, you know? So um, it's my testimony as to how God can and will change your life as long as you stay faithful. And you bounce back. You bounce back. I mean, sometimes what you were going through as a young teen, you could have given up yes, with what do. you went through. Yes, a lot. Unfortunately, a lot of um, our sisters and brothers do. Um, we think that they're just on the side of the road under that bridge or mm -hmm. homeless and um, poverty stricken for no reason. And most of the time, that's the reason growing up in um, dysfunctional households. Exactly. Yeah. All righty. Now let's move on over to Miss Mary Coleman. Oh, wow. Let me see where to start. Okay, your book. You got some stories, okay? But you were born back in, do you mind giving your age? What is that there, book? It's in the book. It's in the book. I was born in, in 1933, uh, back during the Depression. And uh, I lived as sharecroppers uh, on the white man's farm, along with uh, my other siblings. My mom passed when I was five years old. Wow, five. So, uh, so my stepfather uh, partially raised me until I, I reached the age of 10. And at that time, uh, I met my, my biological father. And of course, then I had two daddies. Wow, how was that, so, having two daddies? Having two daddies that, <laughs> that really loved and cared for me. So uh, my biological father uh, determined uh, that I should maybe come live with him. And uh, I was shipped off to Chicago at the age of 10. And I lived there with them for a while. And, and your other siblings as well? No, just me. Just, just you? Just me. Were yeah. you the youngest of the bunch? Mm -hmm. or? Okay, I was the only child of my biological father. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so, mm -hmm. but uh, we, we, we were sisters and brothers. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, with no half 
in that we were sisters and brothers. All righty. But uh, uh, I lived there until I came back to Mississippi with the rest of my family. And uh, we, I wasn't out in Forest, that's my home. I was born in Scott County, Forest, Mississippi. And uh, after that, I came to Jackson. And uh, I met a young man that uh, I fell in love with. Even though I was a young person, when yes. I met him, I married him when I was 16 years old. Okay, <laughs> that's young. I mean, people are still, yeah. Are people still getting married at 16? Yeah, you <laughs> to, had to I have mean, the permission. <laughs> okay, for me, did you have to have permission back then? Yes, okay. yes, yes. Okay. He, he asked uh, my, uh, back at that time I was back with my stepfather and he asked him permission and of course he gave it to him. And, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so, 16, huh? Yeah, 16. <laughs> wow, how so about that? We, we know the story tells all of that about how we met and how we got married and raised our family and the jobs that I worked on here uh, and the uh, confrontations that I had during the Jim Crow area with the, uh, well, I'm pretty sure during, of course, were. during that era, <laughs> right? It was really, it, it was something. It, okay, it, it, it was, it was something. I told him that, uh, in, on several jobs that I worked on, I had to walk off on because I was determined that I was going to find my little niche in life. So I would work on them a while, and when things didn't go right, I walk off. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> Yeah. How yeah. many jobs did you have that you well, walked off and things didn't go right? <laughs> quite a few. Really? Yeah. Quite a few. Yeah, quite yes, a few jobs I, I had there in uh, one company. Did you have any idea back then that what you really wanted to do before you started your own, what is yeah. it, Trendsetter? Yeah. Trendsetters Bible College. Okay, yes, I did. Uh, I ran up on a lady that uh, I was cutting hair in her house. And I told her, this is something I wanted to do all my life because my brother-in-law used to cut hair on the shade tree. He wasn't a barber, but he cut hair. And she said, well, why don't you? And uh, I said, well, I don't know how to go about doing it. And so she called the State Barber's Board and got me connected with them. And I enrolled at Utica Junior College, which is a branch of Hines now that's in Utica. And that's where I took up my barbering. And that was in 19... Six, uh, fifth, six to nine. And you were the first woman in Mississippi? Mm -hmm. I know I'm oh, one of the first, but at that time, I, I don't think there was another licensed barber. Oh, woman, okay. Not the licensed woman barber in Mississippi. So as a barber, mm -hmm. did you do both male and females? In the beginning, I did not, because uh, when I went to school, they just taught us to cut hair and to shave. But then later on in life, uh, when they our license changed from barber and style, our license says barber style and license now. So I had to go back to not to school, but I attended seminars and things like that, and picked up on the rest of. So was that. your clientele at that time mostly men? All of them were men at that time. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Did they pay you well? <laughs> well. <laughs> You know, back when I first started cutting hair, haircuts was a dollar seventy-five cent. Oh, and wow. today they're a dollar and seventy-five cents. A dollar and seventy-five cents for and a haircut. And today, of course, it's higher. Oh, wow! Well, now they're fifteen and twenty dollars for haircuts. Oh, well, some uh, I think some haircuts are higher than that. Oh, yes, yes. And then you know mm -hmm. it helps when the people tip too. Oh, yeah. Especially if you do a good job. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I got Well, I tell you, we'll hold that thought. Okay. We are going to take a break <laughs> and right. come back and find out a little bit more about Mary's story and song and about Mrs. Uh, H. Coleman. All right. And a little bit more about Star Keisha. Okay. Beloved, we will be right back. Welcome back, beloved. My guests are Star Keisha Roundtree and Miss Mary H. Coleman. They both are authors. Star Keisha co author or co wrote the book with you? Right. Okay. Now, okay, I had so many thoughts going across my head. <laughs> but Scott, Star Keisha, what um, happened to inspire you to hook up with Miss Mary to help co author her book? 
Well, one day I got a call from my publisher, Miss Meredith C. McGee at Meredith, etc. Um, she said that a young lady was in her in our office who had a story that she really wanted to tell, and she needed someone to help her um, get it together and ready for the public. And I, I told her I'd come down and I'd check it out. And that's when I first met Miss Coleman, and she handed me a fully typed manuscript, fully typed, in need of much more information and editing as well. And once I read it, I went to work interviewing her. I mean, we, we called constantly. It's sometimes two and three times a week just to um, get all of the memories from her head onto the page. Wow. Because the story was just that inspirational, just that encouraging. Any siblings in Mississippi? No, I don't have any siblings that's still alive. Oh, you're the only one left? I'm the only, I'm the only one left. Wow. There is. There were eight of us. Yeah. It was I had six sisters and one brother and myself and uh all of them. And you decided me. that you were ready to write your story? Yes, yes, I did. I, I was at my church we had a group of ladies that we met once a week in Bible study. And uh we decided that we would write a short bio of our lives so we could get to know each other better. It is pretty challenging, I mean, to <laughs> sit down, I mean, probably starting out, right. to sit down and, and write out a little a bio about your life. That's right. In a page or so. Right. I, I know you can't put everything in no, there, no. but is it, do you find it to be pretty challenging that's or is how, it easy for you? That's how it started. That's how it began. When I got to writing that, then things kept coming to my mind that I want to put on paper. So I, I just kept writing, and uh, after I got all of it together, you know, it looked pretty good to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when I looked, like she said, when I went for a publisher, then she was available to help me finish it. But, uh, you know, that's how I got it started, you know, writing. I had no idea of completing the whole book. I was just going to write a short bow. Yeah. Do you have any relatives? In Mississippi, mm -hmm. like um, nieces, nephews, well, I, daughters. I have, I have a few sons. nieces, and nephews. I've got uh, uh, my husband just passed in March of this year. Oh, really? And uh, we we had four children, and three, two of them are still alive. I have a son and a daughter that's here in Jackson, and then I have some grandchildren and great grandchildren. Of course, I've uh, they're not all in Jackson though. But I've got uh, 12 grandchildren, and I got 24 great grandchildren. Wow, now and I that got is three interesting. Three great great <laughs> grandchildren. So I've got a big family. Yes, you uh -huh, do. It's still around. Most of them. I'm pretty sure your um, grandkids and whomever, mm -hmm. and maybe the great grandkids, mm -hmm. depending on their age, I'm pretty sure. Have they read the story? Uh, the ones sure that are old enough, they have uh, read it. And uh, they're excited about it because they're named. Oh, okay. It's in the book. It's, it's in, in the, the book. book. It's in the book. So they're excited about uh, the book. So how long did it take you to to complete the book? Since she already had typed it out, or was it you who typed it out? I mean, no, you typed it out or mm -hmm. mirrored it? She actually had um, Miss Norma Alexander, Miss um, Margaret Walker Alexander's, is she, daughter -in her daughter-in-law, mm -hmm. she typed it out for her and did a round of editing. But when I saw it, it was just, what she had there is the backbone, uh, was the backbone of her story, but the flesh was missing, and I oh, needed really? that flesh. <laughs> I needed it because, you know, the skeleton. So I, she said she needed that flesh. I needed it. I needed it because just from what, when I started reading, just to see, she was born during the Great Depression in 1933. And that particular year, 13 to 15 million Americans were jobless, were without jobs. So it was bad for people in the United States, right. period. Then to grow up through the Jim Crow era, mm -hmm. where, you know, the, the black laws outlawed everything you could and couldn't do. So, and then to be a young woman during the civil rights era and to take charge of your life and do what God placed in your heart to do and accomplish your goals, it was just so inspiring to me that I needed every drop of everything she, everything she experienced. And 
it was crazy. It took us three years to get it edited and ready to the point where it is now. And in those three years, we our relationship like flourished. Um, there were plenty of nights that we cried on the phone, you really? know, during interviews. Um, that was some stories, all that yeah. was something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she. Um, it, it's almost like. God put a mirror up in front of me because I see a lot of similarities in our stories, but um, it's just her strength. Her strength really amazes me because she, she's been through a lot and she's still here, still smiling, and she just stopped cutting hair last year. Did you? Last year, yes mm -hmm. ma'am, last well, year. Yeah. Well, since you just stopped last year, <laughs> you just decided, I don't want to do it anymore. I don't want to do any more hair. I want to do something else. <laughs> Well, I, I mean, you have the book. Yeah, I have the book, and uh, I, I just decided uh, that it was time for me to, you know, stop cutting that hair. That phase of your life was that day was over. That's now right. It's time to start I a new did chapter. everything in there that I, I had. I taught other peoples. I opened a school, and I taught other peoples to cut hair, uh, men and women to cut hair, and I've got uh, students scattered all over the United States that I taught to cut hair from right here in Jackson at Trendsetters. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I decided I'd go home and do some fishing. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> really, how often do you go and do some fishing? Well, not as often as I would like to, uh, but I try to get out there at least two, two or three times a month. I try really? To so you do fishing, anything else? Uh, well, I'm still writing. And, Are uh, you going to I've, do another book? Are y'all going to co-author another book, or <laughs> she well, got this? Look, she's she's an author now. She, she got really it. Is. <laughs> and she I've an also uh, recorded. I sing, uh -huh. so I have a CD that I recorded in uh, in 2013. A gospel group that uh, I organized about 56 years ago, and we are, I'm still singing. Some of them. Wow. Uh, have left me, but I'm still singing. That just picks up me a younger group to background me. And, oh my goodness, uh, how about singing. that? Yeah. I want to talk just a little bit more about that CD when, when we come back okay. from break. That is so interesting. And yeah. I did hear you do a song on Kixie with Lissie yes. Hayes. Yes. That was nice. I wrote that. You wrote that? Yes. Well, we want to come back and continue along that pathway. Okay. All right, yeah. beloved. We are going to take a break and we will be right back. Welcome back, beloved Okie Doke. I am here with Starkeisha Roundtree and with Miss Mary H. Coleman, co-authors of Mary's Story and Song. And this is a memoir about your life, Miss Mary. My life story from, as I said, from five years old up until now. And, uh, I, we was speaking of the recording. Uh, I did record in 19, in 2013, uh, and the, uh, it's the Angelette Gospel Singers, and they were from right here in Jackson. And uh, it's simply the title of our CD is Almighty God. Almighty God. Almighty God. And uh, we uh, we're still together. We, How often do you all go out and perform? Well, use this three or four times a month, and uh, oh, really? yes, we we sing on uh, the anniversaries, and we, then we have programs of our own. And on uh, uh, that was year before last, I, I forget year before last, I believe on the gospel show that they have, they just had here in Jackson. Uh, we were uh, presented there as one of the oldest gospel singers in Jackson. We were honored on that program oh, on the great. Music Awards show. Right. So uh, we're still singing. I haven't given up yet, but the young lady that was with me, they're so cooperative about coming, getting me, and getting me to the right place where I'm supposed to be. So, so you lead songs and you do solos by yourself? Yes, I do a few solos, but I'm basically the leader of the okay. group. I lead all of the songs. They just background. How do y'all come up with the songs? Well. 
as I said, the ones we have on tape, uh, on the CD, are songs that I wrote myself. All of them, okay. And, and things would come to my mind. Sometime I'd be in the middle of the night, I'd jump up and grab me a pencil and start writing. <laughs> oh, wow. And, uh, so I put it all together. So there are a few hymns on there that would, I rearranged, and then the rest of them are songs that I wrote. Myself. Miss Mary, you are such an inspiration in so many ways <laughs> because I'm looking at you were born in 1933 and I hadn't uh, added up how old that makes you. <laughs> but the bottom line is you look so gorgeous. Oh, thank so you. So gorgeous. You thank know, on TV you get a different look, okay. but in real life you get a, uh, you know, a look different than what uh, the real life is the real life. Right. And you look so beautiful skin. Yeah, well, thank Miss Mary, you, baby, beautiful thank skin. You. Thank you. You look really good. And that uh, lets me know that no matter how old you get, you can always look good. Keep yourself up. Yes. I'm 83 years old and, wow. and I've always been told that uh, you don't ever let yourself go. Just because you're getting old, you don't oh, let yourself Say that go. again, Miss, Miss Mary. Hold up, hold up, hold up, Miss Mary. Look into that camera right there. Look into that camera and say what you just said because there are a lot of women younger than you and older than you who That's need right. to know that. So That's look right. into the, see that red light. Say That's what right. you just said. That's right. We are beautiful black women and we should never let ourselves go. Keep ourselves up and, uh, and respect yourself. If you respect yourself, then others will respect you. And then with God's grace and his mercy, we'll, we'll survive, we'll make it. I've been here 83 years. I've been through a whole lot. I've been through the storm and rain, but I'm still standing. All right, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Not go ahead, go uh, ahead. Oh, go ahead. Go yeah. Ahead. Yes, wow, sir. you didn't know I was yes, going to tell you to do that, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. But you said something that was really good because, mm -hmm. again, I have uh, noticed quite a few women, young and older, mm -hmm. mature, who just let themselves go. That's right. That's right. And it's good to see someone, mm -hmm. because it used to be when I would see women my age eons ago, and I would look at them and I would think, man, is this how getting older <laughs> looks? You know, it becomes their outer appearance and maybe sometimes the inner yeah. mindset as yeah. well. When they think about themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, that is, that's important. You know, getting back to uh, trendsetters, uh, uh, he has expanded the trendsetters since the young man, Anthony, uh, bought it from me and now he has a shop now that's in the VA hospital and that's where I was working <laughs> up until <laughs> last year. Really? Uh -huh. and, uh, it's a barber shop that's located in the, in, VA hospital. in the VA hospital and it's also called Trendsetters Barber. And what's the hours? Yeah. Uh, they are there from 8 o'clock until 4.30. Yeah, and do we have to make a appointment? Week. Is it something that they just it's walk, walk in? in. It's walk, walk in. It's walk in, right. And the college is down on Terry Road. Uh, we still have oh, it okay. on Terry Road. The college right. is still going? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. And uh, tell me about how the college go. Is it um, every three months? Every, I mean, how does that go when it comes to people enrolling? It's a 1,500-hour course. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. And according to how you enroll, uh, you can complete it in nine months if you're going full-time. Really? Uh, 18 months part-time. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. So tell me a little bit about your aspiration, you know, in the future. I mean, I know you want to still write it. Mm -hmm. And then anything else? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, as I said, I'm still uh, writing. I've already started on the other book that I'm writing. And I'm also uh, writing some old songs to be recorded. And uh, I, I just want to stay active. I know. And write because I, I just don't. I've always been active. I've always worked, uh, 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 gotten around, you know, so I don't want everybody to be telling me, just sit down and you don't, you don't pay your I know, why dues. should you, okay? No. <laughs> <laughs> just because you retire from one right. business mm -hmm. doesn't mean that you retire from, from life. Everything, that's right. I told if I just sit down, I'm going to grow old. Wow. And I refuse to grow old. Oh, wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll take that to heart. Do that. <laughs> and you wonder why I'm so inspired. I know, exactly. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to, you know, really feed off of what you were saying. Uh -huh. and, and prayerfully, in Jesus' name, it stays at the forefront of my mind. <laughs> it will because I got the taste. <laughs> 
All right. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Now tell us if anyone, because it's in, you got the book in okay. hard, mm -hmm. hardback. Mm -hmm. This is in hardback. Mm -hmm. Deborah, you can put me on camera. What camera am I on? Okay. This is in hardback. And it's the same book, and this is in softback. Mm -hmm. And again, the name of the book is Mary's Story and Song. That's Mary right. Harrison Coleman will star Keisha. Now, where can, if anybody out there in the audience is interested in um, having their own copy, where can they go and um, get their own copy? Okay. Well, you can visit meredithetc.com, and that's www.meredithetc.com um, for, uh, for autographed copies of either title. Um, to order the um, hardback copy, you would need to order it from the blog. Um, the softback copy is available on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, or you can visit your local library with your library card and um, just request the book. Um, you'll need the title and the author's names, and um, they should get it and put it on the shelf for you. And the same thing with Starkeisha Estrella. For autographed copies, visit www.meredithetc.com or um, Amazon, Barnes & Nobles. Um, we have a Facebook page set up for both titles, so please stop by there and um, give us your support by hitting that like button. Um, we're local, so if you see us out and about and you want to stop us, take some pictures, or get you an autographed copy from our hand, that's fine too. Okay. Well, beloved, I am getting a wrap up and we are going to come back and wrap it up. We'll be right back. To obtain your copy of Starkeisha Estrella or Mary's Story and Song or both, go to either MeredithEtc.com, Amazon.com or BornsAndNova.com. Welcome back, beloved. Now, Star Keisha is going to give you that contact information once again, and then we're going to see if we can get Miss Mary just to sing just a little bit of her one of her songs. She may and she may not, but we'll see. <laughs> okay, Star Keisha. All right, the web address again, well, the blog address again is www.meredithetc. Dot com, and that's www.meredithetc.com. Okay, Miss okay, Mary, any final right. words? Uh, I would just like to ask everybody to uh, buy my book, read my story, and sing my song. Sing your song. That's right, read my story and sing my song. And a little bit of the song uh, that uh, Star Keisha wants me to sing is uh, In Jesus' Arms is the name of the song, and it's my testimony. And it simply says, if you look for me, you can't find me, find me nowhere. If you call my name and I won't be here, if you seek for me, you can't find me, find me nowhere. I'll be resting in Jesus' arms. All right, yay! <laughs> Y'all, it has been a plum pleasing pleasure to sup a little tea with you too. Okay. I have really enjoyed it. Beloved, go out and purchase Mrs. Mary's book, Mary's Song, Story and Song, right. and Star Keisha's book, Star Keisha Estrella. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks to Trio yeah. Beloveds for tuning in and we and I and everybody Thank else. We'll see you next time Thank on you. the Lady Walker Show. Ta-ta.